Hi everyone, today I have another super awesome amazing project for you guys because today we are making a locally sourced tadpole aquarium. Now before I can start building this locally sourced tadpole aquarium I need to do some local sourcing. So through the power of uh, video editing here it is. To do the local sourcing I'm here at this beautiful pond and here I'm going to grab some plants, hopefully some wood and rocks and some tadpoles. I'll start by taking some of these plants. If I can get this plant out without ripping it apart that would be nice. Wow, look at that, a little isopod. There's even a carp swimming here. I wonder how it got here. I'm going to try to catch this piece of wood. There we go. Whoops. That's a really nice piece. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a tadpole swimming there. And I'm going to try to catch it. Looks like it escaped. Small interruption here. I thought I caught catching another one on camera, but I only found this picture. So what I think has happened is that I missed the record button and when I wanted to stop recording I actually took a picture. Oh well. I also caught a stickleback. I threw it back because I don't have anywhere to put it now. But let me know if you'd be interested in a stickleback aquarium. Let's try if I can catch this nice piece of bark. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. I just put everything in this jar for now before I start aquascaping and I gotta say I'm loving this project already. I tried to only catch tadpoles and throw back all the other animals I caught but there's still a surprisingly large amount of non-tadpole animals in there. They're all more than welcome though, I just didn't want the aquarium to become overcrowded. Now before we start, full disclosure. I suck at aquascaping. Um, I've never been really successful at all. I have one nice aquarium, but that just grew over the course of three years into something somewhat nice. So this is going to prove to be very interesting. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add some sand, because that is what all the uh, professional aquascapers seem to be doing first. And it actually kind of makes sense if you think about it because it would be a real pain to do the sand last. But anyway, let's start by adding the sand. Now, I usually just dump in the sand and make one big equal layer. But the professional aquascapers always seem to be doing something I've never even considered. And that is to add some terrain in the sand, to have some slopes, have some hills. So I'm going to attempt to do that here today as well. But I won't make any promises. So you just have to bear with me. Meanwhile, I'm trying not to block the camera so you can still see what I'm doing. I also hope that this bag doesn't make an awful lot of sound and you can actually still hear me. Okay, so now I'm going to do some sandscaping, I guess. And what I want to do is make this part a little higher than the rest. Now look at that. Isn't that a nice slope? 
Well, I don't know. I do hope that this is somewhat entertaining. I'm afraid not. <laughs> yeah, that's looking really nice. All right. So, part one, done. Okay, so next I'm going to be adding some wood. And I do have a feeling of what I want to create. I want to have some of the pieces sticking out of the water a little bit. So I'm just adding some wood. Next step will be adding the plants after this. And I don't know how they will fit in with this yet, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I do realize just how unprofessional I sound, but uh, I hope it's still somewhat entertaining. And I also have a nice big piece of bark, which I want to add somewhere. I want to do something cool with it. Oh, oh my God. Can you see that? That's quite insane. Well, in you go. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, we have this really big piece of wood. And actually I think that would be better if it was underneath <laughs> here. I'm also just trying to keep this entertaining for you guys, but I don't always know what to say. Because what I'm doing right now is adding water to an empty tank. I mean, how exciting can that be? Also, if you're wondering why I'm not just dumping in a whole bucket of water, um, well, I'm wondering that myself too now. No, um, it's actually because this I can control. Uh, and if I would dump a, an entire bucket of water... Oh no, what's happening? If I dump an entire bucket of water in there at the same time, all the sand will fly everywhere and the wood will fly everywhere and everything will fly everywhere and I'll, I'd have eyes <laughs> So the wood and the bark uh, are both getting a little out of place. Is that English? Well, I don't know. They are moving to a place where I didn't put them. That's what I want to say. Hold on, wait a minute. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, when I went locally sourcing, I saw these pieces of wood and bark floating, so they would be an easy target for me to grab. What I didn't realize was if they are floating in the pond, they will be floating in the aquarium as well. So now I don't know what to do because my whole experiment is um, not going according to plan anymore. <laughs> I am guess I'm just gonna take out the floating bits for now. I, I genuinely didn't think this would happen. Uh, so out of the four pieces of, no, sorry, out of the six pieces of wood I wanted to put in this aquarium, four float. Um, now, when I was at the pond, um, I didn't film all the sourcing because the, it would be too complicated. So, um, while digging for some plants, I also found this piece of wood under the water and I thought, well, I'll just take it home and uh, I'll see what I can do with it. And even then, it did not cross my mind that the other pieces of wood that were floating would be floating in the aquarium as well. So now, um, well, you, well, that was just really dumb. <laughs> I don't know what else to make of it. So anyway, these pieces of wood are sinking. These pieces do do what I want them to do. It might actually be kind of cool to have some floating 
pieces in the tank. We'll just see what happens if we put this piece here. It is natural because I got it from the same pond and it was uh, floating in the pond. So Let's see if I can wedge it in here. So it looks nothing like the original scape anymore. And I'm not sure I like this as much as the original scape, but it's not half bad. Uh, I'm just wondering if you guys were already screaming at your screens when you saw me pick up these floating pieces of wood and if you already saw this coming for miles. So let me know because it's probably just me that is so stupid. I can wedge it in here somewhere. Yeah, this could work. So next step is adding the plants, I guess. Mm, I'm still not 100% sure I like this uh, floating here because it does block a lot of the light to the lower parts. So I'm just gonna take it out for now. I hope you learn a lesson from this. If you do go out and locally source for your aquarium, make sure to only pick already sunken pieces of wood. Because otherwise you're gonna have to deal with this. And you don't want to. I forgot I also had these rocks. So maybe they're just heavy enough. Wow, look at that. Ooh, and it bubbles. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to have some, some, something here in the back. So maybe I can, nope, nope, I can't. So I'm hoping to fill this empty area up with some plants. This is another plant, a green one. Here we have yet another plant, which I am going to plant. I'm just rambling on about nothing here. <laughs> I might even cut this all out. Planting, 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 planting. Um, well, the okay, this probably won't grow underwater, but I found it underwater, so I'm going to plant it underwater. This is my way of living, and nobody's going to tell me any otherwise. I'm going to try to add some more wood somehow. As per usual, this entire operation turned from aquascaping into panicscaping. So nothing new for me. <laughs> Ugh. Um, I, I really like this piece, but it, it just just won't sink so maybe I will let it float let it do what it wants to do is this nice okay okay maybe some rocks will be the magic answer here and these never float I've never had a problem with rocks floating Okay, so this is all I'm going to do um, with the aquascape for now. Um, it did not turn out uh, the way I intended it to in the beginning, but you know what? It's not half bad. I kind of like it. Um, so now I'm just going to wait for it to clear, the water to clear, to everything to settle down. And then I'll uh, add the tadpoles. So now I have added the tadpoles. 
this is a really fun project to do yourselves. Um, but if you do want to do it yourselves, um, well, first of all, make sure it's legal. Um, some species, some frog species are protected and you can just take tadpoles. Um, all the frog species in the Netherlands are protected, but it is legal to collect um, frog eggs and tadpoles um, and watch them in your home as long as you return them once they become adult frogs. Also make sure you know how to care for them. You don't need to have a very uh, high-tech uh, setup. Um, this setup is um, just an um, uh, LED floodlight, something that I've always wanted to try to use for an aquarium. Uh, you don't need filtration because as I said earlier, unless I cut it out of course, um, tadpoles are very hardy. Um, so as long as you do regular water changes, you should be fine. Um, but also make sure they have some room to climb out of the water. Like for instance, I have some wood here where they can climb out because at some point in their development, they develop lungs. And at which point they can drown in the water if they don't have a chance to breathe air. So you want to add a rock or wood that is partially out of the water or uh, if you need to even a piece of cork because they can't jump out of the water yet but they do need to breathe. Um, and also make sure once they do become baby frogs that you have a cover on top of the aquarium so they, jump, so they don't jump out. Um, other than that you should be good to go. So I'll see you guys in the morning when the water is even more clear and we can really take a proper look at what's going on in this aquarium because it's quite a lot. This video is already getting quite long so I think I'll do a separate video on this aquarium and its inhabitants. But I'll just give you a quick overview of what it looks like and a short introduction of the critters in this aquarium. I think there's about four or five different plant species in here. And there's a few duckweed plants floating on the surface of the water. So we'll see if their population explodes. Here's a front view of one of the main stars of this project. I never really thought about the concept of tadpole nostrils, but uh, it makes perfect sense. This is a phantom midge larva floating in the water column. There's actually quite a few of them in here of various sizes. They are a neat little insect to observe. There are quite a lot of water insects in here too. I only put 7 or 8 of these tadpoles in the aquarium, so they won't get in each other's way too much. And it gives a more natural look. Plus, I didn't have to catch as many. Just look at that handsome isopod. Here you can see some veins in the tail of this tadpole. They are all starting to develop uh, back legs already. Like I said, I will probably make a more detailed video about this aquarium. This was a little bit of a different project than usual, but I do hope you enjoyed it. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>